Good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church. Let's stand and sing number 468. Joy Unspeakable, number 468 in your hymn books. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free and Sunday school and I want to pray. Seated. Amen. Welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church today. And uh, boy, I tell you, it's good to see uh, everyone out today. Good to see some folks, some of you back from traveling. And uh, good to have everyone here. Now we got some more folks on the way. We got some other folks traveling and out of town. Uh, some folks that are still uh, not able to be here, especially think of the Hoxie family. Uh, continue praying for them and be praying for Tasha. She's just a few days away from her due date. And uh, I know they'd appreciate your prayers there for health and for uh, uh, safe delivery and all of that. But uh, be in prayer one for another. And uh, may we continue and stay faithful to our God. Uh, as summer is just around the corner, hallelujah. And uh, we have, uh, uh, we're either this week going to uh, have to mow the grass or we're going to have to vote as a church to buy a goat. Uh, anybody in favor of buying a goat? Uh, all of you that raised your hands, you just want to eat the goat. I know how you are. And uh, so praise the Lord. Uh, summer is upon us. And uh, we're gathered here this morning getting ready to fellowship and uh, sing his praises and learning the word of God together. 
and I'm sure excited about that. We're going to go ahead and have another congregational song, and then we'll uh, dismiss our teenagers for the Sunday school, and we'll get started in our adult Sunday school this morning. Let's sing number 347. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice. Number 347. God, while the flowing hearts rejoice and tell its raptures all abroad. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed sins away. Oh, happy bond that seals my vows to him who merits all my love. Let cheerful anthems fill his house while to a sacred shine I move. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how Watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Tis done, the great transaction's done. I am my Lord and He is mine. He drew me and I followed on, charmed to confess the voice divine. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Rest my long, divided heart, fixed on this blissful center rest, nor ever from my Lord depart, every good possessed. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away, he taught me how to watch and pray, and live rejoice. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Amen. Teenagers, you may be dismissed. And take your Bibles and turn to Genesis 37. In Genesis chapter 37. And if you do not have one of our Sunday school lessons, Brother Jerese will sell you one. Brother Jerese, what's the price today? Ten bucks, man. Do we take uh, food stamps and goats? We do take goats in on trade. And I uh, know if anyone, uh, raise your hand there uh, for our Sunday school lesson today. We're looking at lesson number four, uh, our journey to Egypt. I had a discussion, by the way, speaking of goats, I had a discussion with my dog yesterday. And uh, I told my brother Bonnie, Miss Cheryl needs one up here. Uh, I, told, I told my dog, unless he started eating, eating grass like a goat, I was going to have to mow as well. So you'd be praying for, for Yeti, be praying he decides to get on board with becoming a goat. Uh, Genesis 37, we're going to look at verses 1 through 10 as we talk about the journey to Egypt or Joseph's walk of faith. And uh, we're looking here, verse 1 of chapter 37, and Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought into his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. 
And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we are binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance unto my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, <coughs> or shalt uh, thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance unto me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And let's pray together. Lord, we ask for your help this morning as we look in your word. Lord, I thank you for these dear friends gathered here, Lord, my church family. Lord, I pray you bless and meet their needs. Lord, I pray you'd help us as we examine scripture today. And Lord, as we talk about Joseph's journey of faith, Lord, may we realize that you have a journey for us. And Lord, I pray if there's one here this morning that has not been truly born again, that has not exercised that faith in you for salvation, Lord, I pray they do that today. Lord, I pray that every believer here today would realize that you have a course, a path, a plan for us. Lord, may we learn some things that we can apply in our walk as we study the, the walk of faith of Joseph, uh, Lord, his journey uh, to Egypt. Uh, Lord, bless us. Lord, help me uh, to teach you right your truth this morning. Lord, may you be glorified. In your precious name we pray. Amen. As we look here this morning... We look at some things in Joseph's life and some things that happened uh, to Joseph. Second uh, Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 says, For I am not ready to be offered at the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now, I, re I keep reiterating this, but I want to do it again this morning. As we talk about this journey of faith, we're not talking about a journey to faith. We're not talking about coming to faith in Christ. Rather, as we speak of this journey of faith, we're talking about our journey as believers uh, growing in our faith. And Paul, as he was given the pen to Timothy, said he's, he finished his course. He, uh, he went all the way. He didn't say, I outran everyone. He didn't say, I, I've run faster than Peter. He didn't say, I've gone farther than James or John. Rather, he said, I finished my course. I, I completed it. Can I tell you that Joseph was a young man who completed his course? He, he went all the way. And Christian, as we think about our walk of faith, our journey of faith, God wants us to go all the way. When I was a boy, I lived in Wyoming. How many have ever been to Wyoming? There's not much there. Uh, there are some pretty parts of Wyoming. They're the Black Hills. Maybe you guys drift through the Black Hills. Uh, we didn't live there. Uh, we lived in a place called Gillette. Uh, Brother Gerald, I don't know if they make razors there or not, but we were in Gillette, Wyoming. And in Gillette, Wyoming, there's only a couple of things. There's flat red rock. There's cactus. There's tumbleweeds. And then there's these flat top mountains called buttes. There's no grass. <laughs> there's no trees. Uh, the only flowers are on cactus. Uh, it's a pretty rugged country. My dad was uh, building a coal silo. He was working there. And, uh, praise the Lord, that's uh, the, the place where I, I got the gospel was there in Gillette, Wyoming. It's where I got saved. But one time we decided as a family we were going to take a hike, and we were going to hike up one of those flat-top buttes that was back in behind the area where we lived. And as we were going up, it was me my dad, my mom, my sister, my uncle, uh, maybe, I think maybe my dad's cousin was there, and my dog. And my dog's name was Rex. He was a Boston Terrier. And as we were going up, about part way up the mountain, my mom said, I'm not going any farther, I'm staying here. Me and Robin, Robin, my sister, she was three, I think, or maybe about four. And so they stayed. They didn't make it all the way up. 
But we went all, my dad, my uncle, myself, and maybe my dad's cousin, I can't remember. We went to the top. I remember when my mom and my sister, they stopped and they didn't complete the climb. My dog was tired and tongue was hanging out and panting and he decided to sit down. And of all places that dog could have sat down, he sat down on a prickly pear cactus. I can remember, I was a little guy, but I can still see my dog as he chose a very bad place to set his little backside down, and uh, he, uh, he got up very quickly. Uh, but my mom didn't make the journey all the way. She stopped. A lot of Christians, God has a journey for us, and we say to God often, no, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going to go any farther. I'm, I'm not going to keep following the purpose and plan for my life. But Joseph, as we're going to see today and and we'll complete probably next week. Joseph was a man who, like Paul, finished his course. Uh, he was a man who suffered, yet he remained faithful to God. Uh, he was in many ways like the Lord Jesus Christ. I shared this last week, but I want to give it to you again today if you missed this. Joseph, like Christ, was rejected by his brethren. Uh, Joseph, like Christ, was loved by his father. Uh, Joseph, like Christ, was victorious over temptation. Joseph, like Christ, was taken into custody because of a false witness. Uh, Joseph, like, like Christ, suffered from doing that which is right. Joseph, like Christ, uh, promote, was promoted from prison to rule the nation. Jesus was promoted from prison to rule uh, the nations. Uh, we know the, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And as we examine the journey, this journey of faith of Joseph, and we're talking about his journey to Egypt uh, there were some temptations, there were some blessings, there were some difficulties, there were some hardships. It was not smooth sailing all the way. I had a 61 Ford station wagon, my first vehicle that I owned, and the gas gauge didn't work. The sending unit was, I guess, probably rusted and didn't go up and down, so the gas gauge needle never moved. Now, had the gas gauge needle moved, when you press the gas, you could have probably watched the needle go down uh, because it had a, uh, a big block FE 390 high compression engine in it, big Holley double pumper carburetor. It drank fuel. Uh, it would not have been a good car to have today in 2022. <laughs> but that fuel gauge didn't work. And so what I tried to do, I tried to remember every 100 miles to get gas. But I didn't always remember. You know when I would remember? I'd be going down the road and that, that big engine, whoa, all of a sudden it'd be, whoa, and I would go, oh no. Oh, I'm running out of gas. And I would pray, please, Lord, let me make it to the gas station. And I remember several times I'd pull it down in neutral. It was a, a three-speed manual transmission. I'd put it in neutral, press the clutch, pop it in neutral, and I'd be coasting, praying, oh, God, let me make it all the way to the gas station. And on several times, the Lord answered that prayer. Uh, he felt sorry for my stupidity. As that big old boat of a car would slowly roll in, and I, more than one occasion, I rolled into a gas station. The engine wasn't running, gas tank completely empty. And just the momentum of that 5,000-pound almost car rolling. But on a couple occasions, when I felt that it would die, I would coast, I would stop, and there was no gas station. Early one Saturday morning, as I was going to minister in the inner city of Chicago, I had to push that car one mile. One mile. Now, praise the Lord, some of it had a little bit of a grade down, not up. And I was able to get in and coast a little bit and push. And, but it was difficult. It wasn't easy. I'm so old now, I couldn't do it. My knees would give out. Uh, I'd probably just uh, say, forget it. I don't need a car. I'm just going to walk the rest of my life. But I, I had to push it. It wasn't easy trudging. Joseph had some difficult days. Matter of fact, Joseph had more difficult days than easy days. But Joseph walked by faith. Point number one in your notes, if you missed this last week, we see a journey of faith. 
a journey of faith. The Bible tells us in verses 1 through 5, uh, it speaks about, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Genesis 35, back just a couple pages. In Genesis 35 and verse 1, it says, And God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of, of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, And to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean. And change your garments, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all their strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under an oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. We see here as we go back a couple of chapters that Joseph before... He came to time that God would take him down to Egypt. Joseph had already started a journey of faith. Joseph had already started to obey the Lord uh, as he was shared the word of the Lord by his father. Uh, faith, by the way, is trusting God's plan. Trusting God's plan. How many of you have ever sat in an airport looking out the window at the airplanes and you've said to yourself, it's not possible something that big and heavy can fly. You ever done that before? And you're like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, it doesn't make any sense at all. But it works. It works. Can I tell you, God's plan works perfectly. And we trust God's plan. That's faith. Hebrews 11, uh, 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. As we talk about this journey of faith, uh, letter A in your notes, there's faith to receive God's revelation. Faith to receive God's revelation. Now, when we're talking about receiving God's revelation, I'm not talking about saying, okay, God, you know, give me a vision. Tell me what you want. You know, speak to me in a dream. I want to see a 500-foot Jesus. No. How does God reveal himself today? God reveals himself today through his word. The fact is, I have the perfect, complete, whole Word of God. There is no new revelation. But Joseph lived in a day when he did not yet have all of God's Word. God spake, the Bible tells us in times past, holy men of God uh, spake as they were moved by God. God spoke to, to Joseph uh, directly and through dream. Uh, today, God doesn't do that. He reveals His will to us. Uh, the revelation of God's Word is by His Word, the Bible. Now, Joseph was willing to listen uh, to God's Word. He had the faith to receive it. Genesis 37, 5 says, And Joseph dreamed a dream. And they told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. In that dream, the way God was speaking to Joseph... God was laying out a plan. Now, Joseph didn't understand all that plan. It didn't all make sense to him, but he was laying it out. We have, uh, I have the plans that our uh, architect has laid out for our building project, and we're uh, waiting. They're presenting that to the city, and we're waiting for permits and as I look over the plans, I, there are several, several pages, a large PDF file. I can look over the, the plans for all the aspects of the building and all the aspects of our renovations. And I understand about 90, 99%, 95% of all, all the drawings and all the plans. I, I understand that uh, because I've done that kind of work before. Uh, but someone who's never done any kind of building or construction, they would look at those plans and they wouldn't make a lot of sense. They would be nothing more than a bunch of lines. Understand that God showed Joseph the plan, but Joseph didn't understand all the lines. Joseph couldn't connect all the dots, but Joseph believed God. 
Joseph believed the will of God was good and right and true. And Joseph was willing to follow by faith. Christian, we need to have that faith to be willing to receive the word of God, even when God's word doesn't always make sense to us, even when we can't connect the dots. The Bible says that all things work together for good. Now, it doesn't say all things work together for your good. It works together for God's good. We can't always understand that. Joseph, by the way, he didn't yet know that verse. That verse had not been revealed to Joseph yet, but God revealed it to him. So, Pastor, how do you know God revealed that truth to him? Because as an old man, his brothers came when his dad was dying and said, Don't kill us. Dad's going to die. We know what you're going to do. As soon as dad's dead, you're going to murder us. We probably deserve it, but don't do it. Well, Joseph say, You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Now, Joseph wasn't saying, Boy, I sure like being a slave. He didn't say, Boy, I sure like being in prison. I wish I could go back there. I really enjoyed it. Man, I liked being dead in that pit. Man, I liked it when you were talking about killing me. That was awesome. No. That wasn't good for, in Joseph's mind. But Joseph realized on the other side, God meant it for good. So we have to have the faith to receive God's revelation even when it doesn't always make sense. Even when we can't do the proof in our mind and make things add up right. How many of you remember math class in high school when you had to start doing proofs? Remember proofs? You know, they wouldn't let you just give the answer. <laughs> and you give the answer, then you had to prove how you got the answer. My math teacher, she's in heaven now, she hated me. She despised me. My, my brain is, I think I was dropped on my head when I was a boy. Uh, my brain doesn't work like most people's brains. And it doesn't work like anybody's brain. It doesn't work at all. But when it came to math, my brain worked different than most people. And I, doing like calculus, I, I would do calculus equations and I would get the answer, but I wouldn't get the answer the way that you're supposed to get the answer. And I would do many of those equations in my head, which you're not supposed to be able to do. And my math teacher would say, you can't do it this way. And I would say, but Mrs. Williams, am I right? Yeah, but it doesn't make sense how you're right. I said, but, but am I right? She says, yeah, but you can't get there the way you got there. I said, but did I get to the right place? And we would go back and forth. And she, oh, she, I drove her crazy. Uh, that's probably why she went to heaven so early. Uh, but I... She wanted me to give the proofs and show how I did what I did and how I got back. And, and to her, when I would show her the proof, it would be like if I was going to drive to Calgary, you know, if Colton was going to drive to Calgary tomorrow, you know, he, and he told me, okay, Pastor, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to Alaska. I'm going to take a ferry across to Russia. I'm going to drive across Russia. I, I'm going to drive over to the Netherlands, get me some waffles. Uh, I'm going to drive all across the continent. I'm going to get an airplane. I'm, and he, he tells me all these ways, and finally I'm going to end up in Calgary. I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. You just get in the car, you drive three hours south, and you're miserable because you're in Calgary, but you made it to Calgary. You know, when it comes to God's Word, I don't have to understand it. It doesn't have to make sense to me how it works. I just have to believe it. I have to have the faith to receive it. Joseph didn't understand the dream. I, I don't think Joseph knew what was going to happen. He just knew that was the will of God. And Christian, we need the faith to receive God's word, but not just the faith to receive God's word. Letter B, in your notes, we need the faith to recite God's revelation. Verse 6 in our text, the Bible says, And he said to him, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance unto my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Christian, I need to be, have the faith to receive the word of God, and also you and I need to have the faith to be able to recite or tell people the Word of God. 
to share the Word of God. It's vital. The Bible tells us in Thessalonians chapter, uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, 4, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. Not as pleasing men, but God was trying our hearts, just as Joseph, just as Joseph received the word of God, the revelation of God, and he shared it. It wasn't a popular thing. It wasn't something his brothers went, Woohoo, we're excited about that. No, they said, Woohoo, we're going to kill you. But he shared it. Christian, we need to share the word of God. We've been put in trust. We've been trusted with the word of God. Not to hide it, not to conceal it, but to share it, to speak it. As we see there, to recite it in your notes. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will go with us. He will not leave us. He's always with us. Christian, I need to have the faith to say, okay, God, I want your word. I want your will, and we need to have the faith not just to receive it for ourselves, but to share it. But to share it. We see the vitalness of that journey of faith. Number two in your notes this morning not only was it a journey of faith, but number two, it was a journey of faithfulness. A journey of faithfulness. 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. As we think about Joseph's journey, as he made it to Egypt, by the way, he went to Egypt by way of the pit. He went to Egypt by way of the slave traders. He went to Egypt by way of Potiphar's house as a slave. He, he went there by way of the prison after being lied about by Potiphar's wife. All of those things lay in the way and along the path of Joseph's journey. But Joseph was faithful. It was a journey of faithfulness. Joseph's journey brought him through times of despair, but he was faithful. How many of you have ever dug, uh, dug sod before, lifted, lifted sod out of the ground? When I was a boy, I worked with my dad every summer doing construction, remodeling, building. One summer I was, I don't know, maybe 14, 13, 14, and we were building, going to do some sidewalks. We were going to... Uh, we're digging out some sidewalks, and uh, then we were going to uh, frame, uh, frame them up, form them up, and pour them with concrete. There were some other sidewalks, that old broken down sidewalks. We had to break the sidewalks and uh, break the concrete and remove the concrete, and it was hard work. And I remember two different times when we were doing that work when I was a boy. You know, one time we were busting concrete. I had a sledgehammer. My dad had a sledgehammer. I was young, lots of energy, and I grabbed that sledgehammer, <laughs> and man, I'm beating that concrete, and I'm just, I'm blasting that concrete for all I'm worth, and after a few minutes, however long it was, I was, <gasps> I was tired, I was about to fall down, I looked over, and there's my dad. He hadn't slowed down. He just kept going. My dad was about 300 pounds. My dad was not in amazing. He was strong, powerfully strong man, but he wasn't fit. <laughs> he wasn't in great physical condition, but he just kept going. I remember the next day we're digging, and we're having to dig the sod out to where the new, new sidewalk's going to go, and I'm just trying, I'm digging it out, same thing, I looked over, I'm worn out, leaning on my shovel, breathing hard, and there's my dad. 
just slowly going. You know, he was faster than me. He broke concrete faster than me. <laughs> he dug dirt faster than me. You know why? Because he paced himself and just kept going. Christian, God wants us to keep going and be faithful. God's not looking for you to be faster than your brother or sister in Christ. Or We're not in competition with one another. God just wants us to be faithful in our walk. It was a journey of faithfulness. Joseph could have quit many times. But as far as we can tell from scriptures in, in, in the book of Genesis, there was never a time when he, he did. He stayed faithful. Each trial, I believe, strengthened his faith. Over here in the pit, I don't think Joseph was ready to be in prison yet. But God strengthened his faith a little bit here. God strengthened his faith as he was sold as a slave. And every difficult situation that Joseph was faithful in strengthened him, built his faith to where Joseph, when he went to prison, said, I believe God. God knows what he's doing. Letter A in your notes, his journey of faithfulness, he was faithful a, when he was betrayed by his brethren. <clears throat> Joseph's brothers envied him, yet he remained faithful. Genesis 37, 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Joseph's brothers persecuted him. They planned to kill him. They cast him in a pit. Uh, but he never got even. He never did something back to them. In Genesis 37, verse 20, it says, Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast had devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. Christian, let me help you with something this morning. Every one of us will go through seasons of opposition. Seasons where things are difficult. How many of you maybe early on in your driving experience, maybe you've done it in recent days because you're forgetful like Pastor Rice, but how many of you have set the parking brake on your vehicle and forgot you had it set? You ever done that before? And you start to drive, and you're like, man, I don't have very much power. Something's wrong with my engine. Man, it's like... Man, i got to press the gas more than normal, isn't it? It's really working hard. And if you're like me, you go for like 10 minutes. And you're like trying to figure out what's wrong with my engine. What's wrong? What's wrong? And then all of a sudden you realize, you may not say this. I say this to myself. You big dummy. Your parking brake's on. And you got to turn the parking brake off. And then it's like you got turbo mode. Vroom! It can take off. Because it's not holding you back. Kind of like on my kayak. I remember one time a couple years ago, I was, I was paddling. And man, I was just, my kayak wasn't moving. And I realized I'd accidentally dropped my anchor overboard. And I was dragging my anchor in the mud. Was, oh, man, why is it so hard to go? There's going to be times in your Christian life and your walk your walk of faith, it's going to feel like the brake's on. It's going to feel like you're dragging the anchor. There's going to be that opposition, but we need to remain faithful. He was faithful when he was betrayed. May we stay faithful to our God. God can use the trying circumstances of your life for his good. Letter B he was faithful when he was sold by his brethren. Genesis 37, 27 says, Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. By the way, lest you forget the, fam the familiar connection here, not only was he sold into slavery, he was sold to his cousins. You understand, this, these are the descendants of Ishmael. 
literally his cousins bought him as a slave. When you think of the family betrayal, it wasn't just his brothers. It was his other familial connection here. He said, yeah, there's money to be made. We'll sell him. We'll take him as a slave. When he was sold by his brethren, verse 28, and they're passed by midnight merchantmen, and they drew near and lifted Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Jealousy had happened, anger, bitterness. This wasn't some foreign country. It wasn't some warring group that opposed Joseph. It was family. Christians sometimes... Family will oppose your walk of faith. Sometimes the biggest battle you face will not be against someone you do not know. It will be a battle raged by those who are supposed to love you the most. And Joseph stayed faithful. He stayed faithful. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. He was faithful. He was faithful. You know, we would think that the opposite of success would be becoming a slave. We'd say, boy, Joseph, then turn out well for you. You're not very successful. Christian, we need to stop using the measuring stick of success, using the world's measuring stick. We need to use God's measuring stick. Because you know, if, you're, if you live in the U.S. and you come to Canada to visit, cross down at Sweetgrass, you're on your way driving across Canada and you see the, the speed limit signs, 110. You know, somebody with a vehicle from the U.S. crosses the border, says, oh man, I can go 110 here. They start going 110 miles an hour. Whoa, my man, this is great. I like these speed limits. This is pretty awesome. All of a sudden, RCMP, probably Brother Bergeron in southern Alberta, pulls him over. Brother Bergeron says, hey, you're driving so fast for him. They said, man, I'm not driving fast. Have my crew set at 110. I'm following the speed limit. I'm doing exactly what your law says, uh, Mr. RCMP officer. Brother Bergeron would have to explain to them, that's kilometers per hour not miles per hour. You got to use the right measurement. Christian, we got to use God's measurement, not man's. Success, the measurement of success is my obedience to God, my faithfulness to God. It's not things. It's not promotion. It's not popularity. It's whether or not I'm faithful and obedient to my God. As we continue quickly, letter C in your notes, he was faithful. His walk of faith was faithful when he was blessed in Egypt. Genesis 39, 2, and the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. This is a, a dangerous, a dangerous time. Christian, look. I want to spend a few moments here, and we may, we may close here today. When we face difficulty and opposition, it's hard. And it's difficult to stay faithful. But one of the dangers that we face is success. The Bible says that God prospered Joseph. In other words, he had success. That's a dangerous time. I'm reminded of the nation of Israel when they came out of Egypt and spent 40 years in the wilderness, and finally, after 40 years of wandering, they finally obeyed God as, jo as uh, Joshua led them into the promised land as they marched around the city of Jericho, and God knocked down the walls, and God gave them the victory. They had had 40 years of difficulty, 40 years of wilderness, 40 years of struggle. Now they had great victory. And God said, I want you to go, 
and I want you to fight against Ai. Ai was a tiny little town. It wasn't a fortified, walled city like Jericho, a small place, an easy, a soft military target, if you will. And what do the people say? We don't need to all go. Man, let's just, some of us are going to relax here. Just let a handful of people go. They'll go down there. Once they get there, the people are going to go, oh, those are the people that destroyed Jericho. We surrender. What happened? In their success, they fell. In their success, they failed. Christian, a lot of times we have the biggest problem with success. You know why? Because we put our guard down. How many have ever walked on an icy sidewalk? And you're very carefully walking, especially if you've got knees like Pastor Rice. You're very carefully walking. And you're so cautious. And you're so careful. And then you come to when you say, oh, there's no more ice. And you put your guard down. And you, whoa, and then you lose it. You ever been there? I have. You're not cautious anymore. You're not careful anymore. Christian, let's be careful in our walk of faith. Let's be faithful in the difficult times, but let's be careful when things are going well, when we're seeing success, when we feel as though, boy, God is really blessing now. Don't put your guard down. Let's stay faithful. Let's not be at ease in Zion. Let's not just rest in Zion, but let's stay faithful. Joseph was faithful when he was blessed. God formed Joseph's life. God made him. God created him. And God found him faithful in trials and blessings. You know, perhaps, the, perhaps the greatest test for Joseph that he would ever face would not be being in prison. The greatest test he might ever face would not be being sold by his brothers or being lied about by Potiphar's wife or being tempted by Potiphar's wife. Perhaps the greatest thing that Joseph would face was when he was finally elevated above everyone except Pharaoh in Egypt. That was some dangerous territory for Joseph. Joseph could have said, nobody can tell me what to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix everything now. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do it my way. But Joseph was faithful. He stayed faithful. Genesis 41, verse 39 says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. You understand that Joseph was called to a position that was laden heavily with responsibility. It was a great burden. A great burden of responsibility. You understand Joseph was not brought to a place of ease. Now, he wasn't a slave, he wasn't in the pit, he wasn't a prisoner. But most likely, Joseph carried a greater burden as second in command of Egypt than he had carried any of those places. And he stayed faithful. He stayed faithful. Christian, as we think about this walk of faith, as we think about the journey of faith uh, that God has for us, you know, we need to realize that God has an opportunity for us to prove our faithfulness to Him. I want to give you one more point quickly before we close here. Uh, before I do, though, let me share a quick illustration with you. Uh, Lee Iacocca, of course, a very famous car manufacturer years ago, wrote in his autobiography these words. Here I am in the twilight years of my life, Still wondering what it's all about. Now, this is a man who had great wealth, great success. 
Here I am in the twilight years of my life, still wondering what it's all about. I can tell you this, fame and fortune is for the birds. Fame and fortune is for the birds. Joseph was faithful. Letter D in our last point here for this morning. He was faithful when he was unjustly accused. Chapter 39, verse 7, the Bible says, And it came to pass after those things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You understand Joseph stayed faithful. He stayed faithful. He stayed faithful as you have printed in your notes there. Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce him. But his response was indicative to his faithfulness to God. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call the Lord out of a pure heart. Temptations will come. By the way, they'll take different forms. They're not always the same. They're going to come at different angles and different ways. But Joseph was faithful. Joseph was found faithful to God, number two. Someone said Joseph lost his coat but kept his character. I like that. He may have left his coat in her, his hand, her hands, but he got away with his character intact. He was faithful. It came to light, his character. He was, number three, you'll see there, he was in prison for his faith. Number four, God's mercy sustained him. Christian, don't ever forget that. Genesis chapter 39 and verse number 21, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. As it tells us there, the Lord was with him. Was with him. God doesn't say, God doesn't say that we have to be rich, or we have to be strong, or we have to be talented. Those aren't requirements. I'm sure glad of that. But God said he requires faithfulness. Faithfulness. May we be faithful in our journey. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you for giving us this walk of faith. Lord, I thank you for salvation so full and free. I thank you for the day in Wyoming years ago when I called upon you, when I put my faith and belief in you and I was born again. Lord, I thank you for the walk of faith you've given me since that day, the journey that lays before me of obedience. Lord, I pray you'd help all of us See that journey of faith, that plan for us. God, may we be willing to receive your word, to share your word. And Lord, to faithfully keep going, to steadily, faithfully, good times, bad times, difficult times, easy times, just to stay faithful. Bless us, Lord. Lord, be with us in our service to come. Be with those traveling yet to be here. Now, Lord, may your word go forth. May your name be uplifted. May you receive the glory and the praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll start our services here in about 15 minutes.